when you have the idea of a bunker, there's a lot of preconceived things that come in. Bunkers are, by definition, pretty small spaces, particularly the way they build them nowadays. They're generally these 10-foot tubes, 50 feet long, and then they just stack tubes next to one another. So it's, it's not very interesting. So I really kind of started from the idea of who is Howard and when did he start this process and what did he, what did he do as he developed it and how long did it take him and what was, he, what was important to him. And it kind of came down to the idea that what was important to Howard was making something safe for his family. That's everything, everything kind of springs from that idea. And I thought it gave an interesting opportunity to create a world that was going to be as much of a character as any of the characters on the, written on the page. And this was a chance to really create something that had something to, to talk about. Some of the designs, I should say, do come from really idiosyncratic people's structures that they've built. There's an image that we found early on of an old man in his bunker sitting, you know, on a rocking chair with carpeted floors and the curved wall. We definitely took inspiration from those, those interesting folk. In general, it's basically all built out of wood. I mean, it's really just a, it's a wood set. And then to get the various textures, we've got great scenics, and so they take the plaster and they paint it to look like cement. So all of that's, that's all those steps of that, of that process. It's always great to see the stuff on paper become, become fully realized and dimensionalized. And it's funny because Jeff and I, the DP, have been talking, and I, I keep complimenting him on the lighting because it's my sense that you can do whatever you want to do and put the most expensive, gorgeous set in the world in front of uh, the camera. And then if it's not lit particularly well, it can look awful. And um, he has lit this beautifully. We wanted different rooms to have different looks so that as an audience member you wouldn't get bored, the whole thing would look the same. And we wanted to build all the lighting in so that the actors would really be able to move freely through the space and then it would also be as authentic as possible. We did talk about the characters and, and the different color palettes of the characters where uh, Michelle's room we wanted it to be warm, uh, Howard's room is quite cold. And then we talked a lot about the main living space. And because there was so much action in that room, we really wanted to create two different looks there, the way that your body would kind of want to have sort of daylight. So we create this sort of fluorescent vibe during the day. And then at night, he switches that off. And there's lots of warm practicals. It's cool to, to come to a set every day and to have to cook up new ways of, of covering areas that we've looked at quite a, quite a bit. When you are confined to a box, it's more exciting because that that confinement breeds creativity. We are shooting, for the most part, in order, in continuity, in sequence. So we're really going from the beginning of the movie through the end of the movie. And it's so special to be on this set and to just go from one room to the next to the next in story order and feel, have the momentum of what we did previously and what we've just shot and, uh, and bring that into the next sequence. It's a cool place. It'd be a great fishing camp. Down here, we're shooting in New Orleans, Louisiana, and there's a lot of fishing camps down here. And it'd be a cool place to hang out, but not to live here for 30 years or so. <laughs>